Welcome to episode 48 of the Get Well With Me podcast, where we strive for excellence, not perfection. And I'm your host, Adrienne Hart, wellness and mindset advocate. So naturally, we talk about all things related to the mindset of reclaiming your energy and feeling good again. And today's topic is the work of Dr. John Sarno. He's the author of Healing Back Pain, The Divided Mind, and other helpful books that are based on his experience as a medical doctor. And he began to realize that the pain that many of his patients described did not correlate to the structural abnormalities um, that he was identifying through imaging. So in other words, a person's pain doesn't necessarily match their injury. And he began to realize that feelings had an enormous role in human illness. Now, I don't have to remind you that chronic pain is a billion-dollar industry, so um, we don't want to muddy the, muddy the waters and entertain the idea that, you know, surgery and pharmaceuticals um, with their special interest, that they do have a special interest in having people believe that their suffering is mechanical, as if humans are like robotic or they just need a mechanical fix. So my disclaimer for this episode and future episodes um, in this mini series pertaining to Dr. Sarno is that this content does not represent Dr. Sarno's work expressly, but is simply my interpretation of the material that I have consumed that was authored by him. My statements are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any ailment, although what caught my attention was learning that a large percentage of Dr. Sarno's patients were cured with simply attending his lecture or reading his books. So I want to get back to that in another episode, um, just the whole idea of how can the acquisition of knowledge be curative? How can learning something new cure you? <laughs> like, how is that possible? Uh, but that was the experience of Dr. John Sarno. And um, I look forward to kind of digging into that on the next episode. But uh, what we're going to do is talk quite a bit about psychosomatic medicine. Um, psychosomatic means mind-body. And from Dr. John Sarno's perspective, when he types the word mind-body, there's no hyphen, there's no space. It is one thing. He does not believe in the dichotomy of human consciousness. Yes, we identify conscious and unconscious, but essentially that they are all one, um, that you are one person. You're your hand and your feet are separate parts of your body, but they are all part of your one body. So we want to um, kind of keep that in mind. I realize that's a bit of a paradigm to try to work with. Um, it's one I'm <laughs> pretty used to since I deal mostly um, in the unconscious. So I face that quite a bit. But I just wanted to let you know where Dr. John Sarno is coming from. He does not believe in duality of mind, although he identifies conscious and unconscious, essentially it's one consciousness. So um, when we talk about psychosomatic medicine, we're talking about treating mind-body disorders. And that is the exact same thing. Psychosomatic means mind-body. So um, common stomach problems, skin disorders, and he's certainly famous Dr. John Sarno for his work with back pain. Um, you know, we talk about, when we look at this work, why are these things universal? Um, why is it that, you know, people suffer with psoriasis, eczema, um, you know, back pain and, and frequently in certain particular spots that, um, you know, you see these patterns that people have this lower back or this upper right shoulder or these types of things. So why are these universal? Because the mind is creating the illness as a protective mechanism. Um, a protective mechanism for what? Essentially any feeling that the unconscious decides is too dangerous to become conscious, meaning anger, hurt, pain, emotional trauma, rage, all of these things that 
um, a person is essentially not aware of. Like they are not in their consciousness. They do not rise to the surface. So what happens is the mind creates an illness or a pain as a protective mechanism um, to keep that, keep those feelings inside. Like that's the goal is to keep them inside. So if the unconscious believes that if this rage or this feeling or this guilt or this shame, if it comes out to the surface, that it would be more destructive than if it stayed inside. So hence then a back pain or a neck pain or IBS or um, any of those common and often mystery illnesses. So Dr. John Sarno says that some people, they say they never get angry. Like they don't express their anger. They say, oh, I'm not an angry person. I'm not a yeller. Um, and in that case, it's we're missing the point. This anger is unconscious. It's something we are not even aware of. Now, someone who swallows their anger and maybe doesn't speak up for themselves, they might have an even larger reservoir of rage that is within them. But um, just because someone doesn't fly off the handle ever or frequently doesn't mean that they don't have this this rage inside, this anger inside, this pain, this hurt, this trauma inside. And Dr. John, John Sarno says in an interview at the very end of his book, The Mind, um, the very end of his book, The Divided Mind, The Epidemic of Mind-Body Disorders. It, this was his last book, by the way. So this was truly a summary of his life's work, which is why um, when I decided to dig in and, and go deeper. This was the book that I ordered and I listened to it on Audible and then of course, you know, reviewed the outline and the notes on the inside of the book. And it's absolutely incredible. But one of the things he says at the end of the audio version of this book in an interview is that self-awareness is powerful medicine. And I really want to get back to that, um, idea in another episode where we're going to talk about self-awareness being powerful medicine and how can the acquisition of knowledge be curative. So that's coming up next. Um, but essentially, according to Dr. John Sarno, it's the pressures that a person puts on themselves that tends to be even more important than the pressures from the world. So when we get to a point in our life and we think, I should have checked this box by now. I should have been, I'm just going to throw out some arbitrary but common examples. I should have been married. I should have had a kid or two. I should be on my career path by now. I should have graduated such and such by now. I, you know, should be owning a house or have a certain type of a vehicle by now. And then when we have this um, kind of picture in our mind of what we thought our life was going to be, and then this reality that it's not that, <laughs> which is normal because life happens, it's that chasm. It's that divide in the middle. It's it's the it's the difference between where we want to be, where we thought we were going to be, and what our life really is. And that in the middle there, that bridge from where we thought we were going to be and where we really are is so much emotional pain to think that you're falling short, that you're not good enough. And a lot of times we play it cool or maybe we let it all hang out. But regardless, it is the reason that so many people are not happy. So that is um, one of the things that accumulates in the unconscious mind and, and is expressed through physical pain. Now, I don't know what your... Um, maybe psychosomatic illnesses might be. I can tell you, I have quite a few myself. Um, this is not a new concept to me. As a matter of fact, um, if you've heard my testimony about how I discovered hypnosis and the impact it had on me in some of my very first sessions just with audio recordings, 
Um, and I was able to become free from a back pain that was completely debilitating me on, on my honeymoon, you know, finally realizing like that this was, um, feelings that I wasn't letting them come out on my honeymoon, but yet they were expressing themselves through, you know, pain that was so severe, I couldn't even stand up. So, um, Anyway, yes, um, maybe migraines, maybe you get headaches, maybe you get nerve pain, um, maybe you've had back surgery after back surgery after back surgery just to need another one or, you know, to not totally recover and not totally become pain free. Or maybe you've been able to relieve your body of f physical pain and now you have panic attacks. I mean, these are the types of things Um as a matter of fact, this is what Dr. John Sarno refers to as the symptom imperative. The symptom imperative is when you treat a symptom, but yet a different one pops up somewhere else. So now your headache's gone with the Tylenol, but, you know, you're, you know, having a panic attack or, you know, just not feeling good in some other type of a way. Maybe now it's your your tummy hurts. So the symptom imperative is when you take away a symptom by some type of an artificial means, um, it could be a medical drug. It could even just be a placebo, um, you know, something that you take or do and you think it makes you feel better. Um, <laughs> what of is... One of Dr. John Sarno's quotes that I was like, hell yes, Dr. John Sarno, you're the man. He says, even a surgical procedure could be this placebo. And he is quoted in saying that a surgery, a physical surgery, is one of the most... Um, effective placebos. Now, we don't want to think that we're letting somebody cut us open for the placebo effect. If we could simply get better using our mind, it would seem that it would be wise to spare ourselves the agony of a physical surgery. So, um, but he does say that really surgery is the ultimate placebo because the, the, effectiveness of a treatment has everything to do with the impression that it makes on the subconscious mind. So if the subconscious mind says, wow, we're really going through great lengths to get better here, then everything works together to get better. And I don't have any studies to cite um, with the next thing that I'm about to say, but I, I know that they exist and I've come across them um, these examples many times before. So it's something you could look into, but the placebo effect of surgery. So for instance, someone who gets put out and told that they had surgery, um, in some instances heals just as well or better than someone who did a lot of times faster because they don't have to heal from the surgery. <laughs> it's like their mind believes that they're on their way to recovery. And so they are. And I know I really, um, belabor this point, but our bodies are self-healing mechanisms. You've never had a thing where you got hurt or you got burned or you got cut or you got sick and you didn't get better. I mean, the nature of what we do is we get better. So when we have these like reoccurring, suspicious, totally real, um, and that's the thing about psychosomatic, in no way does it mean that the condition is not physical. What it refers to is that the mind creates a physical condition. So I know that I know that this is a lot. Um, I'm hoping that this is enough to just kind of pique your curiosity so that you, like many famous people, including uh, Howard Stern, shoot, he dedicated a whole portion of his book to Dr. John Sarno because his work was so life changing. I mean, I am totally not a Howard Stern fan, but I do know that um, he has increased his level of self awareness through transcendental meditation. And so it doesn't surprise me that he would be into using his mind to get better. So I don't know his story, but I do, I did notice that, um, just on the, the back cover of the divided mind, um, 
the number one quote there recommending the book is Howard Stern. He says, I beg anyone who's seeking a solution to pain to study the amazing and revolutionary approach outlined here. I did, and it changed my life. So that's a really big statement. And um, yeah, I just, I, I love this stuff. And when I learn it, I want to share it. I want to make sure that people are empowered to use their mind for healing. I mean, essentially, that's my whole thing. That's been my whole thing is to help people take possession of the actual resources and tools that we have in our own minds. We were fearfully and wonderfully made and we have capabilities that we're not aware of. As a matter of fact, just to shine some more light on what the unconscious mind does is it does everything that you're not thinking about. It's breathing. It's driving your car. It's beating your heart. It's, it's, it's automatically healing you. It knows how to uptake, you know, certain hormones and do all of these transformative processes in our body just for us to get through one day to the next it's absolutely incredible and when you can kind of go into the control center and turn on some power switches that were turned off and turn some lights on so you can see what's going on in there i mean that's it that's what this is about so I'm I'm pretty hyped on the work of Dr. John Sarno and more to come in the next episode. We're just going to dive in here on on a few different concepts and next it's going to be all about how can the acquisition of knowledge be curative? How can learning something new make us better? Like how is that even possible? So that's what absolutely captivated me about Dr. John Sarno's work. And um, even though those results were only in approximately 20% of his patients, the fact that, I mean, 20%, that is notable. So um, anyway, I look forward to getting into all that with you guys soon. Much love till next time. Before I go, I just want to say thank you for spending your time with me. As we change into a healthier version of ourselves, we can feel a sense of loss, loss of our old identity, and fear that the people we surround ourselves with will reject us for changing. It can feel lonely and frustrating like no one understands. When I started getting healthy, I wasn't getting much support from friends and family, so I started looking online. I came across so many radical, all or nothing approaches. I felt judged, alone, and even ashamed. If you can relate to this overwhelm and you like the idea of striving for excellence, not perfection, then you have found a safe place with this podcast. If this message speaks to you and you feel it could encourage someone you know, please share it with them. Remember to hit subscribe and until next time, be well because living healthy doesn't have to be hard and we don't have to do it alone. I'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, shine brightly.